to part three of my horse trailer conversion. In this video, I'm going to be talking about solar. I have done this before in my bus conversion, so I'm somewhat familiar with this, but I'm going to walk you through the steps and the logic of how solar power works and how to install it safely. Okay, so I'm going to do my best to give you a crash course in solar. First disclaimer, do your research. I did this before and spent about three hours researching on the internet. I felt like I was ready to take a solar panel final exam when I was done. Read, 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 read. Look at lots of diagrams. Okay, so this is my setup. I've got two 100 watt solar panels and I have the ability to add more if I find that that's not sufficient for my use, but I think it will be. This is what the front of the solar panel looks like. It's pretty darn durable. And this is what the back looks like. It has these nifty watertight connectors. These are the brackets, which I have not installed yet. So the brackets go on like this. All right, so the next order of business is to hook these together. And I decided to go with parallel for a couple different reasons. But if you hook parallel, if one solar panel is faulty, the other one will still work. Um, and these are the connectors. This is what came with it. I'm not going to have my solar panel um, 10 inches away from my uh, box, my controller, so I went and bought larger ones. These are watertight connectors that allow you to hook them together in series or parallel. This little jobby right here is an inline fuse. I would highly suggest you get an inline fuse. I've seen the charge controllers actually melt on people's videos. I don't want that. Now, how are you going to get from the roof into, into your, your camper? This little thing right here. So the wires come through here and out the bottom. So with this thing, you got to attach it to the roof. Did my research and 3M VHB two-sided sticky tape is going to work great and it's waterproof. Also, when I drill the hole in the roof, I'm going to need to feed the wire through an aluminum hole that will cut the wire. So I got some grommets to put around the hole so it doesn't injure the hole. Now, let's follow this around. Hook my panels together, hook it into a wire, go through the box, then the wires, which is gonna be a positive and a negative wire, will come down to this, a shutoff switch. The shutoff switch allows me to kill the power to the charge controller if I need to do any kind of work. So that will help me to not like get a shocking experience. Now the charge controller works like this. You have your solar panels coming in, positive and negative, and everything's marked very clearly on the solar panel. And then this allows for you to not overcharge your battery or anything like that. Because if you get a lot of solar energy and you're not using it, you could ruin your battery. So this monitors and regulates the flow. So wires come out of here, and you shove them in, screw them down. Wires come out of here to another breaker. This one right here is kind of cool how it works, like that. And it's also a switch. Then you come to your little control box. See how this works. Your red positive wire comes in here, and then you come off to your circuits, your lights and whatnot. And then the black wire comes into here. And then the red wire came from the battery, by the way. So you go from this to this to a battery, battery to this, these to your outlets or your lights, lights back to this bus bar right here, and that big screw right there is a black that goes back to your battery. So what else did I need to get? One of my circuits is going to be a light. I've used these before. These are really, really bright lights. Um, they do have a little button on the side, but I got a simple little switch because one of them is going to be turned on as soon as you walk in the door and I don't want to walk into the trailer, reach around in the ceiling and fumble for a light. I want to just reach inside the door and flip a switch. Then what else do I have? 
two of these. Now one of them is just two. And this one right now, right here, upside down, this one right here shows me the voltage on my battery, which is kind of cool. I've used this before. This is a really bright light. So I'm going to have to figure out how to cover that up at night. Otherwise, the whole trailer will glow blue. If I open this up, you can see that I got some USBs. I can charge my cell phone. I can use a USB fan. Lots of options here. This other one, making this look easy, is just like your cigarette lighter kind of 12 volt adapter. So if you have anything that plugs in with a 12 volt, heck, you can even get little crock pots that plug in 12 volts, little 12 volt toasters. So there's that. Had to buy some wire. I could have gotten 14 gauge braided wire, but I decided to go with, and I got my red and black, positive and negative. I decided to go with 12 gauge just for safety. I'll need to install connectors that will go back to this box right here. And of course, handy dandy wire stripper and crimper because I broke my last one because apparently I'm stronger than I realized. And I have a reading light. This is like super cute. So it mounts and then you can bend it anywhere you want. And no need for a switch. There's a switch on it. So there's that. By the way, I learned when I did this before that the black and the white don't actually hook up like you think they do. So the black goes to the white and the red goes to the black. Um, I can't explain that. I am not an electrician, but that's what it is. This is how the brackets mount on the back of the solar panels. So there are no instructions with this, so you gotta figure it out. The bolt and washer goes on the back, and then on the top you have the washer, the lock nut, and then the nut, or the locking ring, whatever that's called, and then the nut. So you can tighten it down and it stays tightened down so it can stay on the roof of your horse trailer while you're traveling along at 65, 70 miles an hour. So that's how that goes. So I was all ready to start my day and went out to the trailer to do some work and noticed water all over the floor. It had rained really hard and I needed to figure out where it came from and I noticed that Harrison trailers did not caulk the window when they put it in. I can see the cut edge with the naked eye. So that is not cool. That's going to be something I need to take care of right away. So I found a stud, aluminum stud, and I drilled a hole here and I drilled a hole there so I can put my first screw in and make sure I find the aluminum studs on the inside. I put my DHB paper on the underside, so I'm going to pull that off and stick it down. And then when I'm all done, I'm going to caulk the top of it anyways, so make sure it's all watertight. I don't want any leakage. So the solar panel brackets, that's the distance of the holes. So I made sure one of them came through a stud and the other one just goes through the aluminum roof. So I put a gigantic washer behind it just to help hold it. And hopefully that's good enough. It's going to take a lot to rip those solar panels off. This is what my solar panels look like on the roof. I have them hooked together in parallel with those Y connectors. And I have the inline fuse right there and then going inside. So. I have not hooked them together yet because I need to wire everything inside. Now the goal, the actual way you do this is you hook the battery up to the charge controller, then you hook the solar panels to the charge controller. When you come inside, you can see that the positive and negative wires come down. I have them labeled, label everything. So once you have the walls up, you don't go, oh, I don't know what that wire goes to. And so I have a kitchen light, a kitchen outlet, which is a DC outlet, a reading light, some come across here, that's going to another DC outlet, that's going to a switch to a light that is going to be here, and then finally I just need to hook my fantastic fan up and then I'll be all done with the preliminary wiring.